I mean, I'm just looking for people who want to change in their life, like looking to break patterns. I mean, I know that's broad, but I mean, it, at a certain point, you've got to get tired of being mediocre. Like you've got to, it, if you want to change what you're getting, you got to change what you're doing. That's, that's a fact. That's a fact, <laughs> that's man. Simple. So I haven't had the chance to, to meet you or get to know you personally yet. Um, I've heard a lot of good things about you, man. And I've seen you okay. all up and down different leaderboards and a lot of other agency owners have been talking about you and stuff, which is pretty cool. What were you doing before this, man? I was a mechanic, a machinist, I poured concrete. Like it was all man hard manual labor, man. Mm. How'd you but find was, this? Uh zip recruiter. Dang. Yep, 2021. Dang. I applied in January. Uh went through some interviews with different people, went to FFL, uh bank. I went through like 10 different people. Like I interviewed a oh, whole wow. bunch of different places. I started to go with FFL and there was like no guidance at all. And then I went, uh, luckily I found David Hadley and, uh, he, he really took the time to kind of parent me. So mm. like, once you show me something, I can take off and run with it. But I mean, yeah. you can't just give a kid a crown and tell him to draw a circle when he's never seen a circle. Yeah. That was one of the things that I was I, I was really attracted to symmetry by because uh, before this, I never had any sort of insurance background. And, and the joke that I make um, is I couldn't even legitimately could not tell you no the difference insurance. between a, a term and a whole life policy. Like I, I didn't even know I couldn't tell you the difference. Um, and that that was the stage I was in when I got into licensing as a college student and Fumbled around my first couple months, um, really struggled just because I didn't I didn't follow the system, man. I didn't I didn't do what I was being taught to do, and uh, therefore I didn't I didn't get any good results. And so I went to a training event, went to conference, and and learned this, and then uh, got got the I I got the mindset I got the mindset needed to follow the system. Haven't looked back since, man. The insurance world's pretty wild. Yeah, it, it is it's very lucrative. I actually just started my own, uh, or we'll save some of this for the podcast. Let's go ahead and get this thing started. Let's do it, man. Awesome. Let's get lit with Mason Van Meter. Subscribe now. Boom. Welcome back, guys. Welcome to a new episode. I'm actually naming this podcast. It's called Let's Get Lit with Mason Van Meter. So it's going gonna, it's gonna to be fun, man. So anyways, like let's do it. So um got a real treat for you guys today. Elijah Carujo, guys, this, this guy is uh, as handsome as they come. He's got the college uh, pomade slick back haircut, same as me. It just looks good. He, he's pulling off the denim jacket. It's very <laughs> rare I see those anymore. But, dude, you, you've been killing it. You've been slaying the leaderboards. Like, it, let's find out who you are, man. So who mm. are you? Where are you from? And what, what brought you into this? Absolutely. Uh, my name is Elijah Carujo. Um, I just moved, actually, so I, I'm no longer in Virginia. I decided, my wife and I decided to move to the beach. So now we're living in Wilmington, North Carolina. Um, just one of the many perks uh, that you get by being your own boss and, and kind of working from home and being an entrepreneur. You get to, you get to decide what environment you, you want to be in. And uh, decided to move to the beach. And I got into insurance three and a half, almost four years ago. Um, brand brand new. Uh, I got my license in May of 2018 and really got started in the business um, in August of 2018. So it's been good, man. I started part-time while I was in college, worked part-time just a couple of days a week, kind of learned the business, um, got my feet wet, uh, made some money, made some mistakes, uh, but more than anything, I got a taste of what's possible. And then after I graduated, came on full time. And uh, it's been incredible, man. We, we got a growing team now, too. I started as a, as a one man show. And um, now this year we're, we're fixing to pop out two, maybe three agency owners. Three's the stretch goal. Um, so we'll see what happens, man. How many uh, writing agents do you have underneath you? Um, we have some months we have seven, some months we have eight. Uh, this will be the first month that we have nine. We haven't had nine yet. 
Um, on average, in terms of monthly premium, my team is doing about about seventy five thousand a month. April April will be our first hundred thousand dollar month because it's oh, a five. Boom. There you go, dude. And so to, it should be our first five uh, first hundred thousand dollar month, which would be amazing. And personally, I'm writing anywhere from twenty five to thirty grand a month in premium, and we're issuing 80, 85, 90 percent of it. Well, there you go. Persistency is all that matters here. I don't care if you write a hundred grand if you only issue pay ten thousand of it. I, I always I've mentioned- seen that before. <laughs> <laughs> I always mention the issue paid stuff because you see a lot of numbers out there. If you're if you're looking at insurance, there's a lot of companies who boast about numbers, and um, if they don't tell you what the issue paid stuff is, a lot of it is just for show. Um, we don't really know how much well, money. Just to bring transparency around what you're saying, like people will post issued paid leaderboards daily and there's no way you can keep track with that. Yep. Those carriers aren't reporting that stuff on a daily basis or let alone you just submitted something. It's not already issued. But I like seeing the FTC send out stuff that's uh, it's bad for all of us because I mean, it, we have bad people and good people in every company. And that's the sad reality of it is that some people come here for the money. And I'm telling you, those people don't last in this industry long. Or they go on to be these huge corporations and companies. They get bought out because the leadership has a get rich quick scheme. And then those people go on to be failed parents, failed brothers, uh, failed relationships, their public successes and private failures behind closed doors. I mean, I I think there needs to be more awareness around that because I don't really give a shit who you are as a producer. I care about who you are as a person. I I completely uh, agree with that. You you can be stingy with $100 just like you can be stingy with a million. Like when I hear these people like, and this was me a couple years ago, so it's very humbling now. It's liberating. Like all the the millionaires and all these rich people, they're, they're not bad people. Like they're they're typically like look into what they're look at look at what they give away. Like when's the last time you started a college for a hundred kids? Mm. Like oh LeBron James, this when did you send kids to high school and pay for their tuition to college? I mean it's uh I mean a lot of those people are very generous and that's why they have the money they do is because yeah. they're not reservoirs. They don't get resources and hold them up like a dam. Mm. They let resources flow through them like a river and they distribute those to people. When you're empowering other people, you empower yourself. That's what, that's what a lot of people can't wrap their minds around. Yeah. That's something, uh, how, how long have you been with symmetry Mason? Just one year, a year. So I've, I've been here just a little bit longer than you. And that <laughs> what you're describing, and just, just a little bit, like we're, we're I'm not that, that <laughs> we're not that different. <laughs> But um, one of the things about this company that really stood out to me more than anything, man, was was the leadership, because I I didn't know if Symmetry was the best at first. I uh, went similar to you, man, like you you interviewed at a couple of different places before you you kind of yeah, played. Well, just because I had watched so many of those scam pyramid scheme videos like I was trust as a kid, especially as a broke kid in Kentucky. You don't trust anyone in a suit. Mm. They're the damn debt. They're out to get you. Like they just want you to spend money. (laughs) And like, I think there's a difference between ethical selling, getting someone to make a decision that's going to benefit them, even though they can't see it. Like there's a difference in that and doing something for your own benefit. Yeah. Yeah. And when, uh, when I started with symmetry, I looked at the top people in the company to determine like, is this, is the company, ethical is the company a leadership uh like it does it have good leadership and wh- what does what do the the individuals families lives look like how are their marriages how are they as as people uh you know what i mean uh, and so i got to know them a little bit uh won a couple trips with with our agency where we got to spend some time with the founders of the company and that's where i really did a lot of my my kind of homework and due diligence if you will um it's amazing what happens when you when you kind of rub elbows with people, break bread with them, and, and get to know them, and um, and their families as well. And what you were describing too about like uh, income being a resource really to to reinvest back into your people. 
I think that is, is truly the heart of our core values as a company too. A lot of what Symmetry does is designed to make our lives and your, your life too, as an agent, better and easier. And well, like, uh, look at Erie insurance, not to cut you off. I'm super bad mm -hmm. at that, but look at Erie insurance. Like you can't replace a people industry with technology. Yep. Symmetry is doing the complete opposite. You can't empower your agents with technology to help them make their jobs easier. The more simpler you make something like people appreciate it more and it's easier to follow. Yep. It's like, I, I think people just overcomplicate things. I mean, how exactly what you were talking about with resources, people look at money, right? They get paid. They just sell a thousand dollar policy. And what's the first thing they do? They go buy a watch or they go put a down payment on wheels and tires for their truck. Like in the, they don't realize that money is a tool that you trade to get what you want. Mm hmm. I mean, uh, it's, it's funny you say that too, because this morning, um, here's a really practical aspect of this. Like if you're, if you're listening to this podcast or watching this video and you don't even have an insurance license and you want to see what's possible yesterday. So I, we just moved out of state. I haven't worked in probably five days, haven't dialed a lead, haven't written a policy, didn't need to, <laughs> but I, uh, I'm ready to get back into the swing of things. The first thing I do is I invest in something that can create cash flow. The number one thing that you can invest in in the insurance world to create cash flow are leads. We don't do any cold calling here. We're not beating the bushes. I'm not telling any agent on my team, hey, I need you to make a list of 100 people that you think you could sell to. Oh, so I can go sell yeah. to them and train you how to do it. I bought 500 bucks worth of B1 leads. They're 11 bucks a piece. I'm probably going to book, I don't know, 16, 17 appointments. Over the next couple of days off of that lead investment, and I know the metrics and the numbers of this business because it's math, it's predictable. And uh, from, from that $500 lead investment, I'll probably four, maybe five times my, my lead investment over the next seven days. And I don't know where you could go to do that um, well, with an insurance. I license. like that you're touching on that because people want to get money and they want to hold on to it. Like this is mine. I made it. No, mm -hmm. you have to you have to re-put that in. And when you buy something, you have to look at it from a business standpoint. We act like owners because we own it, right? So let's uh let's I've never kind of like sold this opportunity on the podcast. So we can let's dive do into it. that. I love that you're doing it because we need to advertise what we got here, anyways. Um uh, I mean here when when you get paid, you can either invest in an asset like Elijah's talking about, or you can in, invest in a liability, something that's not producing you any cash flow. And those are the watches that I'm talking about. And it looks cool, but do you want to buy a $300 purse to put $10 in? Or do you want to buy a $10 purse to put $300 in? Like it's how you look at things. Yeah. Yeah, and absolutely. I mean, uh, we like our value-based lead system. Because when I went to like a different, when I was looking at a different IMO, what I saw was I was going to have to put in maybe $2,500 a week, $2,500 a week. Is that what they told you to invest? Yeah. I mean, and that, that's just the, and it's from these leads that are being bought and sold to multiple agents for one, but I didn't know that this is the first place I interviewed at. And so I'm talking with this dude. He's just showing me all this stuff he's got. And it's like, that's mm. cool. But, but I, because I was hungry for the money when I came here. Yeah. But secretly, that's not what I was really after. I mean, I just wanted a place to call home and a family environment that I could thrive in, like someplace yeah. I felt safe. And then I, I had upwards mobility. I was after fulfillment and being able to delegate that to others. And then, so, I mean, when, when I'm looking at this from a business standpoint, because I, I've always asked family, like, hey, do you think this is a good idea? I've been vulnerable enough to ask that, like, and not just jump into stupid stuff. Yeah. So I when I interviewed at Symmetry, I'm like, some like why why would I only invest five hundred when these people are telling me it's twenty five hundred a week, and when I look at the returns, I'm not having to spend ten thousand dollars a month to write fifteen thousand dollars of production and only make two or three grand in profit after paying for leads. I can come here and spend twenty five hundred a month. That's my monthly lead investment, by the way. That's what I'm saying. Twenty five, three thousand <laughs> max, three thousand max a month. That's on it. Like if I'm sucking one week, great, pick it back up. Because we know in this industry, you don't just take one week off. You don't run appointments for one week. You're taking two weeks off. 
So, mm-hmm. uh, like what you have now is a direct result of what you did 90 days ago. hundred so, percent, dude. This business is, is a business of a couple things. If you're, if you're on the fence about it, or maybe you're with a, maybe you're partnered with a company that you're, you're not, not getting the results that you I don't want to cut you off, but I just want to finish what I was saying because someone's going to be like, Oh, you didn't like, why spend 10,000 to make 13 when I can spend 2,500 to make 10 or 11 or 12? Cause I can go, all right, 20, $30,000 of production off that and 10 X my lead investment. Like I'm, I'm good at getting people to make decisions because I'm not just a closer. I consider myself not, I don't think here at symmetry we're salespeople. I think we're help people. Mm. But uh, go ahead. I did not mean to cut you off, but I just want no, to clarify. No, you're good, dude. I was I was just gonna say like this. This is a business of a couple things. Um, one, it's it's a business of metrics, and so you you know you know what you need to put in to get out. It's not uh, what what I'm training a new agent or I'm I'm talking about the concept of leads because. A lot of people come here from a, what I like to call a W-2 environment. They show up to a job, they get a paycheck just for showing up. That's not the case in the insurance world. This is a kill what you eat business. This is a results-based income environment, and that can be really great for some people. It's awesome for me because I'm a hard worker, and I'm, I'm willing to bet on myself. So it's a metrics business, one. Um, and so that should remove any fear that you have associated with commission-based income. Because with with metrics, it's predictable. If you do commission this, base is the only way to go. I, I'm unemployable. I can never go I'm back to a job. Job is just over broke. I mean, I see these people get their PhD. You know what PhD stands for to me, Elijah? Poor, <laughs> helpless, and desperate. These people got more degrees <laughs> than a thermometer. I'm making what they're making, but I have a flexible schedule. These people have to be told what to do. They're told what they're worth. That's the stupidest thing. This is why people get stifled and they're already dead at the age of 25. They don't get buried till they're 75 because here you're worth a $60,000 salary. Come back in a year and I might give you 63,000. You let people put a title on you like that. What cup are you drinking out of? What, what, what waters are you drinking from? Mm. It's what Uh, it comes down to. What you put in you is what comes out of you. I agree. And uh, one of the, the simplest, like the things that I, I've stole this quote from somebody else. This is a such a simple business, right? Such a simple business, but it's not easy. the The hardest part about this is coming to a point where you're willing to commit to following a system and doing something that you've never done before. Well, because let's dive into that. Let's not get away from that because this business is easy. It's just easy not to do. Yeah. It's easy not to dial. It's easy not to run appointments. It's easy yep. to get on Netflix and it's easy to play Xbox. And mm-hmm. So that, that's it what is. people can't, you have to look at things from a different perspective here. Yes. And uh, so the system, I'll, I'll kind of talk about our system a little bit. Um, and when I hire a new agent too, um, I'm, you, you have to, you have to meet people where they're at. And this is, this is a leadership principle. You can't. Great. I got to stand um, up too while you're doing that. <laughs> this is a leadership principle. You got to meet people where they're at. And so you, part of part of the, the insurance world too, when it comes to recruiting and mentorship is being able to take somebody from a W2 mindset and, and bring them to a, a business owner mindset. And what I mean by that is this is not a lottery machine, slot machine business. This is a roadmap. And the roadmap is going to take you through some mountaintops. It's going to take you through some valleys. It's going to take you through some bumpy areas. The people who are willing to stick it out and to keep going, despite the the scenery around them at a specific moment, are the people who are going to win here. And uh, I, I talk to a lot of agents who sometimes are struggling. And when I was talking to my mentor, I would call him sometimes after having a rough day or a rough week. And we would get down to the the metrics, back to the numbers, and realize that I simply wasn't following the system. Because, again, this is a roadmap. It's not a slot machine. And uh, if you're willing to commit to that, there's I've not had a single week that I've not made money with this company. Um, you can have a bad day. You might have a bad week. But I guarantee you, if you follow the system, you you will not have a bad month. You won't. There's too much demand for our product. There's too many people out there who need what we have. Uh, there's way too much opportunity out there. And this is a quote from Danny Young. You got to meet him, actually, probably in Cancun. Uh, yeah, but he, him and uh, Melissa are like best friends. So he's he's always on our call. And he's just, 
He's a funny guy, man. He, he's cool. He's awesome, dude. One of the quotes he said, man, was not making money with symmetry is like starving to death in a grocery store. Yeah, I've heard, yeah, I've heard that. And I, I agree with that. I agree with that. And uh, anytime somebody who's not making money here, it's from it's it's a result of a couple things. One, they're not calling and asking for help. <laughs> Two, they don't have enough resources. Three, there's a hiccup in their schedule somewhere. Or four, they're just simply not following the system. They're not using a phone script. They're not uh, focusing on helping protect the family. They're probably thinking more about their own wallet than they are bringing and enough that, value. And that's the problem with today's society. Like our education system, it's not designed to breed entrepreneurs. It's designed to breed factory workers, good little boys and girls who can follow a government system. And mm. like when you break free from that, it's so liberating. Like the W-2 mindset, it's called a poverty mindset, not a purpose mindset. And how, mm. how do you break that? Like it's it's really, it's, it's deeper than just not having the resource or anything. It's designed... We look for problems. It's a survival mindset. It's a scarcity mindset instead of an abundance mindset. What you talking about? Stop starving to death inside a grocery store. We never look for what's right. We look for what's wrong. I guess the problem, and I don't think override should be called overrides. I think it's called leadership income. I'm getting like paid my ability to lead. While I'm like getting percent spread on you, so I'm helping you like focus on your twenty percent that's generating eighty percent of your results. Like that's what I get paid for is my mm. leadership that I've invested in. It, it's not just a simple override. It's I help transition this person's mindset. And I think that's worth money. We're solving a million dollar problem. Yeah. Uh, that's, that's one of the best things about this business too, man, is the, uh, I did an interview yesterday actually um, with a guy. And the first thing that he said he was looking for when I asked him why he was looking for something different is he said he wanted to make residual income. He wanted to build a business. He wanted to create a passive stream of income. Um, and I, I've, I'm just now starting to it's kind of see the forward. Of that. Yeah, just now starting to see that uh, for the first time ever. And it's pretty cool because it's it starts very, very slow, but it's also kind of like watering a garden, man. Like there's a season for everything in this business. Building an agency, creating that passive stream of income is just like planting a garden. The first early stages are rough. You're getting you're getting dirt on you. You're getting beat up, bruised. Your your hands are all just messed up. You're tilling soil. You're digging. It is it is grueling. And then you're laying seed. Then you're watering that seed. Then you're you're tending to your garden. You're helping your agents. You're kind of protecting them their mindset a little bit. You're keeping stuff out of the garden that shouldn't be in there. You're you're tilling other areas. And then pretty soon it's harvest time where leadership, you're talking about leadership, that leadership income, it takes enough vision to see the end result and to continue to work on that garden before you get uh, Let's harvest. use this story. Let's use that story because here's what happens. We have the symmetry flower bed, right? We got a beautiful garden. There's a poinsettias and uh, daffodils and what's another one? Chrysanthemums. <laughs> and we look for weeds and inevitably we end up pulling flowers out of the damn bed mm. like we, we just keep picking ourselves apart because it's what's primed in our brain like it, this two million year old device up here is not designed for growth like it's designed for survival it's your parasympathetic nervous system we look for what's wrong we look for what's convenient and we have to break we have to break that that bondage like people are in shackles I, I, I think it's still modern day slavery. Mm. And it's because over the last 50, 60 years, all these television programs and all this stuff, like it, it's just convenient and it's easy. Like it's programmed us to be weak. Yeah. And how let, do you let me, ask you, Mason. let me ask you something. So I'm 25. You yep. look pretty young. I'm if you 24. Don't you got one year on me, dude. Yeah. Bro, so one of the first things I noticed about this industry, and this will lead me to a question for you that I think we could go down a little bit of a rabbit hole with. Uh, when I joined Symmetry, I was 21, and I went to a conference, and man, almost every other person in the room was like over 45, over 50, um, which nothing wrong with. I was the outlier. Like I was one of the youngest people in the room. I'm sure you've experienced that in, in certain meetings or on trips and stuff. 
So what are you most excited about being a young person who's killing it in the insurance world? Like we are the rarity. Here. Breaking patterns. Yeah. I mean, I literally just like, and what I mean by breaking patterns is breaking your generational curses in your family. Because I mm. mean, here's what actually, let's just start at the root cause of all this. And it comes down to your parents. I think most people aren't even dealing with your own problems. You're dealing with your parents and your grandparents' problems that they never fixed. And what I mean by that, like, let, let's talk about uh, just parenting for an example, because people treat leadership like it's a game, like you're going to win some prize for being the best leader. Woohoo! That's not the case. It's a lifestyle. And I, I feel bad for the leader who's not 1% better than he was yesterday. I'm constantly learning something new. And that's the problem. I, like, how can you convey that? What it starts at is parenting. I mean, I'm, we're pretty much parents here for our downlines. I mean, what kind of water are we pouring in the cup for our kids to drink? And it, yeah. like, are we showing our kids how to argue and talk and gossip about other people? Because kids pick that up, and that's what we grow up to do. We pro then we get mad when our kids procreate after what their environment produced. Like, what kind of environment did we give them? Were we yelling at our spouse? Were we slamming doors and getting mad? Or were we showing them how to be compassionate and generous? Most most parents these days, I, let's be honest, 50% of, like, what is it, a 50% divorce rate? Yep. And 50% of that 50% is from Facebook. That's insane. You've got, you've got, these are just metrics. Don't, like, go look it up. I never want people to take what I say just for, face value, go research it because I've done the research and I want you to validate me because I'm the first person who's learned. I'd rather learn something new than be right. Mm. So like with that, what, what kind of environment are you making for your downlines? Like that's what it really comes down to. What water yeah. are you pouring in the cup for other people to drink from? You can't, you can't yell at your wife or husband throughout your kid's life and then get mad at them when they start back talking you. You taught them that. Mm. You, like that is a direct result of what you did. And that, that goes back into our, like what we're getting now is from 90 days ago. It's delayed. You just can't see it. People cannot look at what they're doing in the now. That's going to impact the later. They're so caught up in the past and what was. Guess what? It's spoiled milk. Get over it. Quit crying. That's why you see people on my Facebook now. Like I literally just had someone make a fake account just to go on there and trash symmetry. So I left it up. Like, And what that goes to show me, drama has no age limit. I don't care if you're 80 or 20. Like wow. this is a broken society and hurt people hurt people. Mm. Like there's still people that I like leadership talking bad about other people. Like that that's, that's not leadership. Like you I can't get mad out. You can't get mad when you get called up on that. Not called out, just called up. Like, and a real friend will challenge you. What kind of people are you hanging around? Because when I'm hanging out with Kishan Monteith in Cancun and Brandon Ellison, like, that makes me want to be better. When you're yep. hanging around the same, like, dead-end friends who just want you to go out to the bar and risk drinking and driving and killing someone's kid, like, oh, I'm coming into someone's house. Who are you spending time with? Are your friends constantly bringing you down about how you raise your kids. That's mm. not a real friend. Dude, can I speak to that for a second? Yeah, so, absolutely. absolutely. Uh, I, I think this is probably one of the realest conversations we've had on here. So I, I love it because sometimes society, like the raw raw is cool, but sometimes society needs savages. <laughs> I completely agree, dude. Um, my wife's in the background listening in and she was she was snapping her fingers when you were talking about generational curses and choosing to do things differently. And that's what um, I'm saying. Like now we all see like nothing good happens after 2 a.m. That text message, what you doing? That doesn't mean, hey, what you doing? I mean, people are forced to lie now. I'm sorry to keep interrupting you, but it's so important to because people need to get this. What are you teaching people? Like, mm -hmm. are, are you teaching your kids it's OK to go out at 2 a.m. and uh, go bowling? We know dang good and well you're not bowling. <laughs> All this, like, it, there's no interaction anymore do we just have what we want at our fingertips this is one of the stupidest things i've ever saw and it's also one of the greatest because this is if you can't succeed in today's world you just don't want it bad enough you're complacent you're mediocre That's, because or you're ignorant I, I you're can grow a business off this thing i do 
I do the same. Exactly. The same it's all thing. how you leverage it. It's all what you use. Are you resourceful? Exactly. Most people, they just want everything handed to them. Like I can literally swipe right for a date now. That's crazy to think How about. How stupid is that? I don't have to have any type of interaction, connection, or commitment to this person. And I can just swipe right and go have a, and go bowling. <laughs> I mean, if, if we're being real, like pe- mm-hmm. people need to hear this stuff because that, this is the only way you break generational curses because here's the problem. We get so mad at people for pro- for trying to deal with problems that aren't even theirs. So how are they supposed to if they don't know? Mm. Like it's not your problem that you don't want to dial. There's something that you just haven't been able to deal with because you've never been shown the right way. And that's why association is so important. This is a broken world. Mm. I think um, one of the, the things that I'm learning about recently uh, is, is the power of association first and foremost. And um, I'm a big believer too, man. If, if you're hanging out with four broke people and this, when I say broke, I'm not just talking about financially. I'm talking about financially, mentally, emotionally, how they communicate, their relationships. Are they broke people? Okay. If you're hanging out with four broke people, you are going to be the fifth. (laughs) And so you need to ask yourself, uh, what do you want? Do you want what your parents have? Do you want what your grandparents had? I was talking to my mom the other day, and this this is not to brag, okay? This is to talk about breaking generational curses and just to keep it real. My grandfather grew up in a very abusive household, Um, like poverty of poverty, okay? Like they literally, the only meat that they had was the squirrels and rabbits that they went and hunted. Like these people were broke, okay? He was one of 11 kids. Every single one of their kids, of of his brothers and sisters were abused by their alcoholic father. So my great, great grandfather was an abusive alcoholic. That was the environment that my grandpa grew up in. As a result, when he had kids, he didn't deal with his shit. And so he created an environment that was better than the environment he grew up in, but was still toxic and was still uh, like just really unhealthy. That was the environment that my mom grew up in. And then guess what happened? My mom ha- had kids. I- I'm, I'm the oldest of four. And love my mom to death. Love my parents. I grew up in a I grew up in a completely different environment than my mom grew up in, and then my grandpa grew up in. And so um, this is getting to a point here. Now back in, in, in looking back on this now, like my grandpa didn't get to have a steak for the first time until he was probably in his forties because they couldn't afford it. Okay. Now I like. Looking at the lifestyle that I have now, knowing the the lifestyle and environment that my grandpa was in when he was 25, it's unrecognizable. And so there's a point to this. And I'm going to bring this back to breaking generational curses and uh, where where you want to end up. There's a quote. I don't know who came up with this, but it's powerful. And it says, um, strong time or no, hard times. I was just thinking about this. Hard times. Hard times create strong men. Strong men create uh, easy times, easy times. fun times, times. Like good times. Yep. Easy times create soft men. Soft men create hard times. Correct. And so here's the thing, though. Like you get to you get to decide what kind of man you want to be. Um, if if your environment is not the environment that you need to need to have. You need to go change your environment. I'm a you huge have a choice. You literally have a choice of your environment, uh, whether it's a, a relationship environment, whether it's literally a physical place, whether it is a workplace. Like when I found Symmetry, dude, um, a little bit of backstory on me. I was working in a call center before this. I was a college student making oh, 11 bucks man. an hour. Did, right, did you call me about my social security no, no dude, I worked in a, okay. funny enough, I worked in a prayer call center. True story. True story. I got paid to pray for people. One of the hardest jobs I've ever had. Um, just because of the types of calls you would get. It was wild. Oh, I, w- I don't um, doubt that. It was also a super depressing atmosphere. I was in a I had a headset on, it was in like a sea of cubicles, it was dark, it was dingy, it was rough. I lasted three months there. Three months. 
before it was starting to take such a toll on me. I, I needed to significantly change my environment. I just up and quit. Up and quit. The next week, I found symmetry and got into licensing. Changed my environment, changed my life. After I got started with symmetry, my next environment I needed to change was the people I was around. I was around a bunch of small-minded people who thought I was crazy for starting my own business, who were like, oh, when you go get a real job, you got an insurance license? That's crazy. You got to invest in leads? That's crazy. Then stuff started to happen. I bought a brand new car all by myself. I drove a nicer whip than anyone in my whole college just because mm. I made 50 grand part-time in college at the same college where my peers would be in line to go to a coffee shop knowing good and well they had $10 in their bank account and were buying $6 coffees. Ooh. Like this is the environment I was in. I had to separate myself because I didn't want what they had. And so mentally I was somewhere different. Then after I graduated, I had to, I had to continually start to separate who I was associating with, even down to my own family sometimes, bro. This is like, what people need to hear. Like, if this doesn't get you excited for him, like, I don't, I don't know why people can't be excited for other people. Sometimes people are feel stuck. And then, and then you ask them, okay, well, who, who do you talk to all the time? And they, they call their, their, their parents or their aunt and uncle seven times a week. And their, their aunt and uncle or parent are the most negative person they know. And they talk to them all the time in every conversation. Guess what it is? Complaining. Oh, or gossiping. And that, inadvertently is is the what you were talking about um what are you pouring into your cup the people you surround yourself with is going to influence what is in your in your water system if you will um and so i had to cut some people out of my life that was hard work bro yeah like you th these people are peeing upstream you can't get mad <laughs> if you're drinking downstream and it tastes a little funny you can't get mad <laughs> at yourself go to a different stream like you're on terminal a and you're going to c guess what was in between b Get off. And so here's here's where this this becomes really valuable. I started to cut some people out of my life, and that was hard to do um, because you almost feel selfish for doing it. But it's the it's the best thing you can do for yourself Concept. is to is to control who has access to you. And um, and so I started to do that, and very quickly uh, I started to have what I like to call a perspective shift. And here's why this is important: when you have a perspective shift. You, you, you see the same thing just from a different perspective. Your perspective shapes your beliefs. Your beliefs shape your actions. Your actions shape your results. Your results continue to shape your perspective. And it just continues this amazing cycle. Oh, it's an infinite um, loop. Yep, exactly. What did I learn on this call? What can I teach on the next one? What did I learn on this call? What can I teach on the next Like That's just a small example. Yeah, man. And so... The, the coolest part, the thing that I'm most grateful for, man, is uh, I'm witnessing breaking generational curses as well, um, kind of like what you were talking about. Well, and it just starts on with quote. one person. Touch on your quote. Like, how, what kind of times are you creating for your kids? Are you giving them a cell phone at age four so they can get addicted to Instagram and be <laughs> suicidal and depressed by the age of nine? This is what happens, man. Let's be real. Mm. These kids are going to school wondering, like, why am I getting bullied and all this stuff? And they, they're worried about Twitter likes at the age of nine. You need to be worried about riding your bike and being in before the street lights cut off. <laughs> but I'm saying like these kids, uh, the, when you turn 16, I had to go struggle. I had to work my ass off for my first car. Mm, yeah. Like and these kids are getting hundred thousand dollar Range Rovers. Oh, well, I just want to make sure my kid has everything. My kid's going to learn to struggle. And that sounds statistics <laughs> to some people, but I bet they don't grow up entitled. Hmm. That's yeah. the problem because now these kids are in the workforce and now they're going for running for office for politics. Now you got these television shows showing kids how to chop up their parents and stuff. The hubbly wubbly or like if your kids are on YouTube before they're like 16, 17, why? Their brain is not even fully developed enough to even be able to process that stuff. Mm. Go, go do some research. Go do some research. Be a parent and care enough about what you're putting into your kid's mind or letting them put into themselves. Or hot them. take, hot take. Go to therapy and get your shit together before you have kids. Ther therapies and all, but just have a life coach. Have a mint, like have a coach because I think a lot of therapists are just after an hourly rate. Oh, okay. Your time's up. Next problem.
<laughs> well, yeah, there's like, some bad ones out there for sure. You, you have to find someone that cares, like someone who can tell you exactly what you not what you want to hear, but what you need to hear. And I mean, break those patterns, break those cycles and show you mm -hmm. when you say mindset shift. Like, yeah, you need to have a breakthrough on how to view things from a different lens. But I mean, it, it parenting and leadership, it, that stuff gets me so rifled up because it goes right into recruiting practices. I mean, I, I used to flood myself and let everybody come in. Oh, I want to make a million dollars. Awesome. That's a car dealership mentality right there. And I was letting all these people come in and they mm. they were salespeople, not help people. Yeah. Like I, I don't care how much money you want to make now, because guess what? The moment that paycheck isn't right because you didn't do the work. Now you're blaming me and you're cancer for the whole group. I will never bring on another person who's in, is in this for money. That's a good word. You don't have to guess what you don't, you can go work for a different agency in symmetry. I don't want you. And that's not to be harsh, but I want people who have heart posture, who are not going to give up. It, like sure. if I tell you no in an interview and you just give up on yourself, good. You weeded yourself out for me. I literally, I'm not even, I'm done using scripts and stuff, dude, because I can tell a lot by what you did during COVID. Did you work or were you one of those people? Well, I wasn't essential. So I got laid off and I didn't do anything else. Or you, you can ask people this. Do you feel lucky? No, not really. Have a, have a great rest of your day. You're probably not a good fit for this. <laughs> I don't want someone who doesn't think they're seriously though, dude, what kind of people like this is a, I'm building a family company. It's not some insurance agency. I'm building a multi-million dollar family ran company. Yeah. So, so let me what, ask you something. What kind of people do you want in your family? Someone who, who's going to go to war for you and have your back? Or do you want someone who's just going to sit on the sidelines while you're getting your butt whooped? Mm. What mm. kind of people are you surrounding yourself with? Show me your friends. I'll show you your future. What are so what are some good questions that you that you ask people to kind of gauge their character and find good people? I think. I'm looking for problem solvers. Tell me about some like tell me your life story and some of the hardest things you've had to deal with and how you overcame it. Like how did you overcome adversity? People who know what they've went through will have multiple like they'll have a detailed explanation of how they solved a problem. The people who don't well, oh, I just uh, got a different job and, oh, okay. So you can't deal with problems. You run around them. Yeah. Next, next. They're, they're, mm -hmm. that, that weeds out 90% of people. And what I'm doing now, I'm cramming all of my stuff into one paragraph. I'm not doing this LinkedIn copy and paste from a script. Oh, $500 for part-time, $1,000 for full-time. Nope. I'm going to give them a task inside of that. And it's, Dude, the faster you disqualify people, the faster you'll bring in qualified people. 100%. 100%. So what, what I mean by that is not just flood your gates through. It, sure, it's yeah. a numbers game, but I want to bring I want to make sure I'm bringing in the right numbers. I don't want to bring in eights and nines. I want to bring in number ones. And what I mean by that, like I disqualify people. I'll, I'll put in a question, like how many YouTube subscribers do I have? People will still apply without even putting that answer in. Congratulations. That's, you played yourself. Well, I'm serious. <laughs> I'm looking for people who can solve stuff and re actually read and follow a process. So I'll jumble it all into one ugly paragraph because the people who take the time to read and uh, like comprehend that are the people who are going to believe in my vision. If you, if you're bringing in people who don't believe in what you believe, you're never going to sell them. That's like trying to sell chicken to someone who wants to buy fish. And now guess what? Now your agency is a bunch of cancer. It's just cancer cells spreading and spreading. And they're bringing in the wrong people who are in it for the money. Like I literally just had this breakthrough a couple weeks ago. Like I'm, I'm, I was feeling like a failed leader because I was bringing in people who were in it for the money and didn't really care about me or what I believed in. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, I, uh, I can, I can relate to that. The team we have now, I've built three or four teams in the last four years with Symmetry. Um, I hit agency owner. Every single person on my team quit except one guy. This is what I'm talking about, dude. After, after agency owner. And like, it, it's not like, do I have wins? Hell yeah. I've got way more losses though than I do wins. 100%. The wins though outweigh the losses because of what they represent. But I've built three or four teams. When I hit agency owner, everybody quit except one guy. 
and he's still with me to this day because he's a real he's under he's unrecruitable. He's unrecruitable. Once you build up that atmosphere that people know they can be vulnerable and learn yeah. from you and you're a family, they'll never leave you. If I guarantee you, half the people in symmetry, if someone offered them a high comp high contract, they would leave. Yeah. I mean, they say flood in the numbers, but guess what? That that doesn't always work. We are a new society. Like people have short attention spans. And if you're just bringing like opening up the floodgates to the spawns, like mm-hmm. you're going to get overrun. You are. And you're going to get when some the eagles start going down to hang out with the chickens. <laughs> Here's and the soon thing. enough, you're balking like a chicken instead of flying with the other eagles. This is this is such a good leadership. This is gold right here. Like if you're not taking yeah. notes, that, that's your problem because you think you can't learn from someone younger than you. <laughs> I can oh, learn man. from a toddler. How do I know that? Because I used to make my cousin hold my hand when we crossed the street. Look both ways before you cross the street. So I set a parameter. And later in life, I'm carelessly walking. Uh-uh. You look both ways before you cross the street. Now I'm being reminded by someone I once taught. He who teaches learns twice. Mm. What parameters are you setting for your people? And like, dude, like if this stuff doesn't get you excited, man, I don't know what does. Like people are so unpassionate about what they do. I think that's an indicator that the grace is not where you a are. A road drive. That's why I'm not just bringing in everybody. It's not a numbers game for me. It's a people game for me. And I'm a, I'm a big believer in quality over quantity. Um, like how I, you talk about you had to build up three teams not to cut you off because they were the wrong people. Like if you vet sure. your people and make sure they have the right heart posture, they'll never leave you because they believe what you believe. And they'll solve more problems than they create. And Correct. the people that I had – the people that I had originally created problems, they weren't problem solvers. And, and that's how you know when the relationship needs to end. You can use this for dating because no one wants to deal with the problems. <laughs> this is one of the uh, the best, uh, I would say, innovations that my agency is making. In the insurance world, what I've seen is a big kind of like throw spaghetti against the wall and just see what sticks. See what the sticks. Top. I'm gonna I'm gonna recruit a thousand people. And those hundred that stick around are going to be my winners. I would much rather spend my time finding those hundred, mentoring, nurturing, and growing those hundred because it's an 80-20 rule. If you recruit 100 people, 80% of your results are going to come from the top 20%. What if I could shift my focus? This is the question I asked myself at the beginning of this year. What if I could just shift my focus to finding the top 20% of people instead of finding a bunch of duds that aren't going to work out the people that we have now bro like we have we have like between six and eight writers a month and we're about to do a hundred grand in volume like we're we're outperforming people who are triple our size that's because you have an unrecruitable sales team you have a family you have a family. family we got a culture but we have people too who are focused on the right things man like um, in my interviews now too, like we're not looking for people who are looking to get rich quick or just want to sell a policy. We're looking for people who want mentorship and we're looking for people who want to mentor other people, bro. Like I did an interview with a guy last week in the interview. That's our first conversation ever. I was asking him like, what is it that he wanted? And he, he was like 23, has two kids married, uh, was in the military at 23 years old, bro. I was like, holy crap, man, this is crazy. But After talking with him, I would have never guessed the background that this guy came from. He grew up in a crazy environment. Like the fact that he was alive was wild. Um, But before he joined the military, he worked on a ranch out in South Dakota, working 100 hours a week as a ranch hand. And he made, get this, 20 bucks a week. 20 bucks a week. This true story. Hard times. (laughs) Insane. And when I was talking with him and I, and I was at, he was a client of mine. Funny enough, I recruited a client. <laughs> and but he during, understands the importance of it. And that, that's what I'm talking about. Someone who yes. believes in what they're selling. And I got to know his story. And the common theme that I, I saw in his story is he's a problem solver, but he also has vision. He has vision for his own life. And if somebody has vision for their own life, that makes my job as a leader easier because, I mean, I can cast vision. I'm good at that. I love doing that. But if somebody already has vision, I can kind of be their Sherpa. I can kind of hold their hand a little bit when they need it. Because you have the same vision. Yeah. 
That's what I'm telling people. Like the right people will come in here and won't even ask about the money. Mm -hmm. They don't care about the commission rate because it doesn't matter. Because they know um, they're going to go get paid what they're worth here. And, and we can talk about the only way anyone should go. I just think in the world. I agree, dude. There'd be a lot. I mean, people would be a lot better off financially. Um, customer service would be better everywhere. Uh, but funny enough about commission, I mean, I get messages from Family First Life all the time, and I'm not going to bash them. They're they do a lot of good. They help There's a lot phenomenal of phenomenal people over there, dude. They're changing There's lives just like we phenomenal, are. Phenomenal, bro. Phenomenal. Um, the the shiny object syndrome, though, that's not it's not going to work. It's not sustainable. Well, it's um, just I not us. We're after a different thing. How many times I've recruited people who are at I'm at a at a way higher contract than me. And then I ask him this really pointed question. How much did you make last month? And the answers are kind of staggering. Now, I'm sure there's people making a great income over there. But there's a lot of people who have a much higher contract than me looking at symmetry as an opportunity. And to me, that is a red flag. Because if, if the shiny object was as good as as they say it is, why are you looking anywhere else? Well, also, that's, because they, that's because the wrong people in that company are bringing on the right people. Mm. And then you have bad leadership. It's failed parenthood right back to the root cause. I don't like looking at symptoms. I'm like, I like looking at the cause. Because when you change that, then you can change the symptoms. People, mm. That's the problem. We're taking ibuprofen when we should just be going out and getting vitamin D from the sun. Like it's a simple life lesson. You're treating symptoms and not causes. And if mm -hmm. that's the case, you'll be running in a circle the rest of your life. Break it now. Mm. So let's give some people, let's give the people uh, an action plan to an practice. An action plan? Life. I mean, yeah. if you're working a job, pick up a side hustle that's selling something. The best, you're always selling. I don't care what anyone says. We come out of our mother's womb as a salesperson. We start crying for milk. We start crying as we get over food and go to play. We're salespeople. We like there's that's just the difference though. The difference between a good salesperson and a bad one is the bad person doesn't even know he's doing it. We're always mm -hmm. selling our ideas to someone to get a way that we want. Once you realize that you can learn it, how you love is learned. Everything is a learnable skill. And the moment you realize that, you can go get what you want. But here's the thing: people people need to understand the difference between price and cost. I literally just sold my first coaching client the other day for $4,500 for a 30-minute session. Wow. He wanted to double his income. He wanted to go from $250,000 to $500,000. So I, I wow. gave him my price. He, he, wasn't, he was like $4,500. That's a lot compared to what? For one, compared to what? He's like, well, I guess Netflix. Well, yeah. But here, here's what I'm saying. <laughs> The price is $4,500. What it's going to cost you is $250,000 if you don't do this. Wow. I want to talk with you about that more offline later. That's like, dude, I get too many messages every day saying, hey, you changed my life. Hey, I, I get that too much not to carry the same passion and conviction into my, di my everyday life to not start my own coaching thing. I believe in myself to do it. Mm. Like I'll, and how I built my, how I'm structuring my new company is phantom stocks. I'm not the owner. I'm dead. I'm mm. allocating percentages to people within the team. That way it's percentage based. That means if the company gets more profitable, you get more profitable. It's phantom stocks. Mm. That's the problem. Wow. People don't want to share. I've learned how to be generous now. I'm literally about to give away a car without That's any insane. expectation of anything in return. That's like, insane. If that's not purpose, I don't know what is. Mm. I mean, an action plan, learn how to sell. Learn how to sell something. You don't have to learn how to. Insurance isn't for everyone. Go learn to sell skin products. Don't If you sell juice, I will come and find you because that stuff is a scam. <laughs> Go <for> juice companies. <laughs> to, <what? laughs> here's, here's your practical action step. Don't sell juice. Don't buy juice. <laughs> sales. Up sales. But I mean, just go do something. Get what you're worth. Break mm. those cycles and really find better relationships and pursue it. I agree with that. We forget how to dream. That's why kids are more intelligent than adults. They know how to use their brain in a different way, more creative. Yeah. The school system and, and government has stifled us and made factory workers. We live bell to bell. 
that's an environment. That's an environment. It is, but once you change that, like the grass really is greener on the different side. I agree. So, I agree, dude. Check this out. This is this is my view. I live uh, at a yacht club now, um, on on the riverfront, Whoa. ten minutes from the beach, bro. And what's wild is when you change your environment, the biggest thing that ha that happens is what's normal to you changes. Seeing a three million dollar yacht thirty feet from where I live is is wild. I never saw anything like that where I used to live. Yep, that's where I used to live, everybody drove, and there's nothing wrong with this. Okay, I'm not dissing it. I'm just I'm just like comparing what's normal in different places. Uh, before this, I lived in a in a neighborhood, beautiful neighborhood. We loved living there. Everybody drove um, Nissans, uh, Kias, and and Toyota Corollas. Great cars, nothing's wrong with them. Move here, $3 million yachts, Land Rovers, Porsche 911s, BMWs, Teslas, all kinds of stuff. And it's that's what's normal here. Now, that's that's a very surface level example of changing the, the environment. But what's normal in my environment now is very different than what was normal in my previous environment. So, and so if you want to normalize a game plan, what you're talking about with a action plan, find someone who has what you want. And ask them. Go learn. If they want to pay, pay them. It's pay to play here. <laughs> I'm serious. How I know so much now is because I've gotten in the room with Cody Assens. I've gotten in the room with the, all these high people, like high functioning people and highly successful people and gotten around them. Like yeah. you have to pay to play. What's it worth to you? Like go find mm. someone who has what you want and learn from them. Like you if you want to learn. Yeah, go ahead. I was going to say, you're about to be a speaker at the 8% Nation Conference, aren't you? Uh, I'll be over uh, on the uh, in Chicago, right? show in Chicago tomorrow and Friday. But that's what I'm talking about, dude. Like, chase your dreams, man. <laughs> Stop sitting down all day and, like, messing your spot. Like, go after something. Just go do something. Pick do up so a book. Read and learn. I'm, dude, I just wrote my first book. I've still got to type it, but I've, I just wrote my first book. Mm. So let me ask you this. Did insurance grow your perspective or did you already know what People you were People grew my do? perspective. Insurance was just a platform. Okay. And once you realize that, you'll be able to grow any business that you want, regardless of what it is, because I understand how to market now. Mm. I understand how to get conversion on leads and drive traffic towards stuff. But that, that's why I'm so out there on social media. I I saw that. Look, and I have no competition. And here's the what, thing. I've already built up my own brand. I've already built my own brand. Mm. I, uh, yeah, I, I can't really add anything to that, man. That's, that's awesome. <laughs> I'm, well, it's I'm not even about that. It's about in, like, I want someone else to do it. Dude, there's plenty of fish in my pool. Go find your pool to fish in. Yeah. And just go do it. I don't like it. Like copy someone. You can literally remake my YouTube videos that I'm doing. There you go. You just built your own brand. Believe in yourself. You, like I said, you can tell the world who you are, or you can let the world tell the world who you are. Mm. Like it, it, it goes right back into how, how open-minded are you? If you think you can't learn from someone younger than you or older, like whatever the case is, that's the wrong mindset. You're, you, you, you're already dead. You're already dead inside. If you're not like the opposite of living is dying. How you, how do you live? You grow. People are perfectionists in today's world. They want everything perfect. Guess what? It's, it's, we're not in a perfect world, but you can progress. Mm. Mm. Dang. So, I mean, uh, Elijah, where, where can they find you at, man? If they want to reach out to you and ask you any questions, cause uh, you've got a really uh, incredible story. And so if someone wanted to work with you, where could they find you at? They could find me on Instagram at the real Elijah Carujo. The real on one. Instagram, the real one. Uh, the spam accounts are coming. Uh, I'm already, <laughs> I'm already manifesting that. That's how you know you're on the right track uh, when you start when your haters start to copy you and literally, literally create profiles for you. <laughs> so the real Elijah Carujo doing something um, right. <laughs> now you can't please everybody, and once you accept that and just move on, you're golden. Here's the thing. I'll go ahead and I'll, this is the last quote I'll, I'll leave you guys with. Yeah, cl close it down for us, man. We talked a lot about a lot, 
Okay. Um, I'm going to end it. I'm going to end it on the most important thing, which is leadership. John Maxwell says everything rises and falls on leadership. And here's the deal. If you want to make everybody happy, do not become a leader. Go sell ice cream. That's what I'm going to say. There you go. There you have it, folks. Go sell some ice cream if you don't want to do anything. <laughs> All right, Elijah. Thanks, man. I'll reach out to you soon, buddy. Uh, hopefully, not hopefully, we'll get a yacht soon. That sounds great, man. All right. See you, man.